I've just come out of a, about a two week, pretty much crushing depression. So in order to stay um, focused at all, I've had to take a lot of notes. And since we had, I got a heads up from a friend of mine who's a police officer. Um, it's my brother standing right back there, the taller one to the right, the heavier older guy. <laughs> I've used humor to get through this for the last 15 years, and don't think I'm not pissed off that I have it. I've been bipolar, the man, which is manic depressive, for I think all my life. I'm um, 51 years old, and in grammar school in first grade, uh, they said I was hyperactive, and they wanted to give me amphetamine. And my mother was completely against that, and every week I had to go and see the school psychologist and do the little, you know, what's this look like? <laughs> um, so I think, I've, I think I've had it all my life, but in the last 15 years, it's been, uh, it started in 1990 for me also. And it just rolled in and crushed me. I had a, a business going that was, um, uh, business and marketing consulting. I had five people working for me. Things were just starting to turn around financially and go well. And all of a sudden one day I woke up and I just had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I think that the first time I really experienced it in a more pervasive, profound way, I was 22 and I'd been married for two years and I ended up um, locked up on G1 over at General Hospital for, for 10 days. And I blamed that on the fact, I figured that my wife was such a bitch that she finally drove me crazy. <laughs> and it was 25 years later that I figured out that, I mean, we're good friends. And she is a bitch, but <laughs> she didn't actually drive me crazy. There was something else at work here other than Yvonne, who I get along great now because I don't, I don't have to live with her. <laughs> the people who commit suicide or over Medicaid are doing it for one specific reason, and that's to get the hell away from themselves. This is not fun. I just, over the last two weeks, I've missed I missed last night totally sleep. I don't live in Rochester, I live in Perry. So I missed, I missed um, an entire night last night, and over the last two weeks I've missed about seven nights sleep. That's a lot of sleep, and it's too much for someone who's bipolar. I drank because I wanted to over-medicate, and I over-medicated to get the hell away from this goddamn thing that tracks me around every fucking day. And you get sick and tired of it. And there's no escaping it. And you can wake up for three days and feel great and then end up locking yourself in your apartment for the next... I have locked myself in a very small apartment, called the kids up who live with my ex-wife, bitch face, who I love, and I say bitch face in the nicest way. Tell the kids I'm not feeling good, be in touch with you when I do, unplug the phone, and not leave the apartment, not go upstairs one floor up to where my grandmother and my aunt live, or one floor up above that to where my mother lives, and stay in there for five weeks, and not talk to anybody on the phone, not have anybody in and not leave the house. It doesn't matter how bright you are or how smart you are. If you suddenly, if you develop a mental illness, your IQ just dropped 100 points. You're an asshole and that's how you get treated. I have an IQ of 150. These guys don't have IQs of 150, yet I walk in and I sit down and I get treated like I'm some stupid ass that knows nothing about an illness that I've suffered with for eight years. And when did that change? I found a woman over at Genesee who said, you know, you've had this for eight years. 
why don't we work together to try to figure out a way for you to become better? And that's what happened. And I'm at, as much as I still have depressions, and I'm still a grouchy old bastard a lot of the time, I'm about 900% better than I was for that eight years. What's it like to, to have a mental illness that's like this? Um, the, the only thing I can, I, can, I can sum it up in one word. It's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. You don't know from one day to the next how you're going to wake up. You don't know whether you're going to be depressed. You don't know if your medications are going to work. Part of the whole thing of mental illness is the fact that what makes it so hard is that you lose, you lose such a large portion of yourself and who you are. And you lose it to, you lose your identity. You're conf you're, you lose it to confusion and isolation and depression and despair and suicidal thoughts. And it's so, every day is so hard that there's days, I ended up having to just break the days down in my own head so that every day at midnight I knew I won because it's a war of attrition. It just drains and takes and takes from you until you don't have anything left. And if you can't feel like you at least win once in a while, you might as well shoot your ass because you're going to make everybody around you miserable and you're not going to ever be happy. Do you worry about your kids having mental illness? Yes. There's five people in my immediate family with it. I have two cousins, an uncle, myself, and my sister. You said that it's basically you treat treat you guys how we would want to be treated if we were in that situation. Is there anything more that you can elaborate on that? Um, anything different that we can do besides that? Yeah, add to it. Absolutely. Uh, usually, I mean, when you're dealing with somebody who, if you've made an assessment, and you you've decided that they're bipolar and they're manic. The first thing you can do, without even getting near them, is to begin to talk slower. Begin to lower your voice a little bit, change the cadence of your speech, begin to slow it down as you ask them some questions. If you can get close enough to them and, and they're comfortable with you and they don't have the police thing, a gentle, just a gentle hand on the shoulder and a little squeeze right here as you talk slowly and you'll slow them right down. Don't be condescending. People, we don't, we, it, I mean, as people with mental illnesses, it kind of pisses us off when somebody's condescending to us.